Andrea Waddell. I'm a California-based abstract painter and educator. Welcome. Uh, today's video is about abstracting the landscape, the way that I do it, the way that I approach it. And um, I'm going to be really using landscape here more as a device and a device for um, choosing shapes and choosing direction and movement and line and edges. Um, and I'm going to be showing you the way I do that when I start from a source image and the way that I am selecting a shape, the way that I'm editing certain things out, um, what I'm pulling in, the things that I'm drawn to and the way that I pull those in. And I do it in a very intuitive way because this is oil and cold wax. So again, it is layering up and then excavating backwards and kind of going a back and forth uh, in a back and forth process around that. But I'm starting, the difference here is I'm starting with a direction. So I'm starting with an image and I'm going to see where that takes me. So I hope that you get something from watching this, um, that you learn really that what, what people want to see from you and from your painting is they want to see your spin. They want to see what are the things that you choose um, to be drawn to and pull into your work. So uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll put in the supplies that I'm using in um, the notes below and let's get started. So I start off by taking these first layers, and I did a video on this previously, and it was foundational layers and oil and cold wax, I think. And um, maybe I got what I thought I might get lucky, and I would just, just do a quick thing and move my wrist around a little bit and look at my image and come up with something that is quick and spontaneous and represents a feeling and a mood, and that didn't happen and that is fine that is completely fine so i'm going to start by there i'm going to start with these four little images as perfect foundational layers and the reason i say perfect foundational layers is that there's enough contrast there so i've got some light colors i've got some dark colors i've got some cool colors and i've got some warm colors and that's a great place to start and i've got kind of colors that are really um you know spun up from an attempt at really just looking at this first source image and trying to just do something really quickly. So we'll start there. So I start with the first thing that I know is these little paintings don't work alone. Cutting back some of the lines and adding a few layers and lightening some stuff up and maybe bringing in some of those, that fog formation. I think that shape is really cool. So I'm going to start there and then we'll see where we go from there. So in this sequence, I'm kind of focused on my foreground, which is that fog. And it becomes the middle ground, but I'm thinking it's going to be the foreground. And I am warming parts of this up, and I am scratching in some movement and lines, the sort of tree formations that I liked. I am creating little, um, activating some texture in different ways. I've got my r &F pigment stick to create these tree formations and then I cover up the dark with light because I can I know I can scratch back and find that dark again and then I get here so now that I have these first layers down and I have this fog formation shape so I'm looking at um, my reference photograph I'm looking at shapes I'm not looking at fog I'm looking at cool thing that moves across image and I want to create something like that and I'm looking at the parts of this that are starting to create an effect like that and it's working there um, I want that sky to recede backwards the background of any landscape is going to be usually cooler and a lot softer so I know that I can work at fixing that and um, looking at the parts of this that maybe have a rule that one of my teachers taught me that I, that I find really helpful when you're looking at designing any kind of a painting is 20% of one thing, 80% of another. So it's kind of working in that lower left one. There's sort of that 20% of the dark red bit and then there's the rest is light up above it. I'm looking to see if any of that is happening and I'm starting to dig out some of the painting 
um, up there in the right to see if there's going to be a warmer color behind it, lifting up some of that line work so that I can um, get that sky to recede backwards. Now I'm working away at it and I've created this really ugly mess, which is never to be anything afraid of. I mean, you shouldn't, I shouldn't even say ugly. I should just say it's a little chaotic right now because I picked out the, the top right one there and there was just not, a, not much behind those layers that I could use. So I'm just leaving it for now. And I'm pulling in, creating textures and lines. And I'm not even looking at that reference photo anymore. I'm just, it is from memory now. It's what are the things that I looked at that I liked that I want to try to remember as I, as I go back to working intuitively. So I'm pulling in lines, they kind of remind me of a hill shape. I am trying to find some movement. I'm using galkide mixed with cold wax here to get it to be more fluid. Oops, lifted that up. Pulling it in over here to see if that won't correct that whole mess there. Nope, have to go at it again. That one took me a long time to resolve, the upper right hand one. I've got my shape maker and I'm going to lighten up that sky with just some white, pulling it across with my brayer and creating a nice line. And now I'm trying to look at, all right, the way that I look at that fog is I feel this way. I feel like I love that movement and there's almost like a dance to the way I try to apply it um, to my painting. Let me make a quick move and let it jump up and move upwards and look for different movements. Back to trying to apply some more fluid um, paint with my brush. Lightening it up, just kind of really playing around. I was tired. When I was doing this, um, which is not a great place to be when you're painting, but I noticed that and I fixed that the next day. And sometimes when you're tired and you're working, you're making choices that aren't ideal. But in this case, I am kind of getting closer to my 80-20 rule. I've got a lot of light space now and just a little bit of areas that have texture and sort of darker colors. I'm going to warm that up and a lot. It's going to pull us forward and darken it. We'll touch there. Same thing. Using my RNF pigment sticks for really a big pop of color. And then I get here. So something that happened here that surprised me and shouldn't have, but it did, is that it doesn't matter if you're working small or big, sometimes it takes the exact amount of time to complete these paintings. And these little guys uh, had to wrestle with them and it took a lot of time and very tempted at some of these junctures like this one to say, absolutely no, this is not working for me. In any way, make it go away. I have to just destroy this thing and I'm going to just slap some paint on and start all over again. So I know that I don't want to do that here. I want to keep working with what I have, which is actually harder. So you have to kind of keep pushing yourself to understand what's working with what's already there and um, push that, push that a little bit further. So that's what I'm going to do in this next sequence. So since I realized the day before I was working tired and I, I was and I wanted to go fast, which is never a great place to be, the next morning I sleep well, I have some coffee, I meditate, and I make a little plan. So I sketch out what's going on. I've got the time to look at my reference image and just look at some of the things in this uh, painting so far that are working and some of the things that are not. And what I'm looking at, um, and don't hesitate to create these little, these little um, drawings for yourself and just kind of sketch it out. And what I'm looking at here is that a lot of my shapes are a little bit fuzzy and most of the edges are blurred. I'm thinking there's got to be places where I can have 
more assertive texture activation, like really decide where that's going to go. And some of those colors have gotten a little bit muddied and chalky because I was painting wet on wet. So I'm kind of um, looking also for the specific color that I was looking at in the, in the picture, that sort of blue, beautiful haze that I liked. And that was one of the mistakes you make when you're working tired is you're just like, oh, I'm not going to deal with getting that beautiful blue color. I'm just going to work with what I've got and I'm just going <laughs> to hope for the best. So the next morning I've got my energy back and I'm going, no, no, I want to find that lovely violet, beautiful thing and find places to put it. And I know that my whites need to be whiter. So they need to be pure and clean with a clean brayer and pure, pure white and just one pass at it. And then I'm going to find ways to decide which of these elements I want um, to, again, come forward and which ones to recede backwards. And also importantly here, um, another rule that's helpful is to think about abstracting the landscape as choose maybe five to seven shapes or maybe five. Simplify it. Don't, you don't need to bring every bit of information in. So I'm kind of deciding, all right, I know which parts of this I want to pull in. I love that, that light sky. I love that, the, that sort of um, those bottom hill shapes and I love the fog. So I'm going to try just to edit out some of this stuff that's unnecessary little by little and to find a few value changes. So some darker shapes, some lighter ones, and just to get my, um, my design down to just a few, just a few shapes. Now I'm getting into it. I've found that cool fog-like feeling in the one on the left by just pulling it up. I'm finding parts of this where, that I can bring in texture. And again, I'm not looking at the image anymore. I'm just going from feeling, memory, and editing and simplifying. And I know if I want my whites to be white, I have to just do one very light pass with either the squeegee or the palette knife so that I can really get the white to be white. I got a little magic happening and then I finally finished them. I have minimal shapes. I've edited out. I've just got the sense of fog, the sense of movement. Um, some of the texture of the trees just suggested and that sky in the background pulling backwards. Hey, you're still here. Excellent. I hope that you got something from watching this process roll out. Um, the end result is just this one little painting that I have left. I sold all the other ones and um, yeah, that was fun. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give it a like. If you liked it, a thumbs up. And if you are interested in learning more about what I do to support artists, head on over to andreawaddell.com and you'll find out all about it.